All right. So, like I said, I'm going to record this uh, because we are building your Traveler character for the campaign, and a bunch of people have always been asking me that they really, really want to see Traveler character creation because they've heard ridiculous stuff like the fact that you can die in Traveler character creation, which you can, which you did last time. <laughs> I'm aware. Which was very funny and quite entertaining, and I'm really glad that we got that content, but yes. Um, a lot of people have been saying, hey, so how does this work? And I tried to explain that it's like, you don't choose what your character is, you choose what your character tries to do. Um, and so the recording that we're doing right now is going to be a way I could, instead of like spending 25 fucking minutes uh, explaining, I could just be like, yep, here you go. Um, watch this. So, let's just go ahead and get right into it. We already made the rest of the party. Uh, normally, we're supposed to do the whole party together, but because you died, we got to do you separately because everyone else wanted to go to sleep because it was it was late. It was like 3 a.m. when we finished last time. Um, so, good news is that because there's no aliens in this setting, it's just cool men, uh, we don't have to worry about race picks and everything like that. Um... Oh, I didn't realize you were going to be in here commenting. The person that's comment for those that are watching the recording, the person that's typing is also in voice chat. Uh, I they had said that they were going to not interact and they were just going to listen, so that caught me off guard. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, is good. Uh, is very good. So the first step that we're going to do is we are going to um. Roll your characteristics, which is your attributes. Uh, so what I need you to do is I need you to roll 2d6 uh, six times. And the numbers that are up there are going to be the effective um, modifiers once everything is done. 2d6 six times, you said? Yeah, so slash r space 2d6. And we're going to do that six times. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. I actually got to figure out how bad this is. Okay, so that's <laughs> negative two, negative one, zero, positive one, negative one, zero. Okay, yeah, you have to reroll because you have a net negative modifier. <laughs> Starting off strong. Same exact way as it happened last time. <laughs> this is here. I'm just gonna split these up here. All right, so that's nine, which is a zero, eight, which is a zero, ten, which is a one. <clears throat> so just like in a lot of tabletop RPGs, uh, first thing you have to do is generate your stats, your attributes. And um, in Traveler, what happens is, is that if you have a grand total of minus one or worse in modifiers, which you do again, <laughs> you re-roll. I have never seen that happen to t someone three times in a row. I've seen it twice before. But three times would be wild. As you guys can see in the recording on the left-hand side here, here are the averages. If you roll between 6 and 8, you have a 0. If you roll a 3 and a 5, you have a minus 1. If you roll a 1 and a 2, you roll yada, yada, yada. Yeah. That one should be good, right? Yeah, that should be fine. Just looking at it right off the bat, I can tell you that's okay. Let's see 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. Yeah, so you have a you have a net total of um, actual positive three there. That's the first time that's happened, I think. Yeah, last time you played, you had a, a net total of zero because you had like one positive three and then three <laughs> negative ones. Yeah. Which the game says, no, you take that. So, <laughs> so you got fucked. <laughs> At least I finished with the ability to punch people really hard. Well, no, you died. You died in prison. You didn't finish with anything. 
Well, I, okay, <clears throat> touche, but... <laughs> All right. Well, plug those into the attributes. Uh, as a reminder, these attributes are strength, which represents your physical strength, uh, your forcefulness, how much energy you can exert on something, dexterity, which is your physical coordination and agility, uh, as well as your reflexes, endurance, which is your stamina, determination, and your ability to sustain damage. Uh, you also have intellect, which is um, not like D&D. In D&D, intellect is book smarts. In this... Intellect is logic, reason, uh, memory, quickness of mind. Uh, it's not really street smarts, but it's like just how how quick thinking you are, how well you can resolve a logical issue. And then you have education. Education is more like D&D treats intelligence. It's you, things you have memorized at an academic level about that subject. Uh, and then you have social standing, which is, like, not really charisma, as we talked about last time. Social standing is not about how likable you are. It's just how much influence you can swing around in a conversation, which can mean that you're super, super likable, but it, like, it could also mean that you're an asshole, but you happen to be born a noble, right? Because if you're really, really high up on the political ladder, it doesn't matter if you're ugly and obnoxious, people are still going to try and pay attention to you. So go ahead and plug those in wherever you want on your Karasha sheet. Just trying to think of where I want my other plus one. Also, funnily enough, I was wrong about the rule. <clears throat> the rule is actually if your modifier is minus two or worse, like your your grand total modifier. Oh, do you want to roll it back or? Oh no, because both of your previous rolls were worse than minus two. Oh, so you were re-rolling them anyway. I just wanted mind. to be clear. Social or dexterity? I mean, that largely depends on what you want to be. What do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I was shooting for like an engineer kind of deal. Dealio. Sweet. That's why I did the education and intelligence. Yeah, education and intelligence would probably be smart. Um... I don't think social really matches this. Uh, well, no. I, if I did social, <laughs> it would be mainly for RP reasons. Yeah. Endurance or strength, probably, would be my guess. I guess I could do that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right, uh, so now the next thing that you have to do is... Uh, do you have the uh, the PDF I sent you of the hand-typed out um, player's guide? Don't forget to open that up. You need your rule book so you can... Uh, I don't think I do. How do you... I, I post... Okay. I don't understand how I sent you something like two weeks ago and... It's already gone. How are you? How are you so bad at everything you do? I'm kidding. I love you. I'm kidding. I love you. <laughs> All right. Uh, hold on. Is it, are you talking about like the different countries or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll send um, it to you. Then. I mean, I I know what the different countries are. No, not the nations and stuff. I'm talking about this that I sent you. The different home worlds. The one that's got all the character creation rules oh. and everything in it. Actually, I think I do have this. I... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. Uh, anyway, on the second... The next step is uh, choosing your home world. For those who are uh, watching the recording, home world is the thing that I kind of came up with. The first edition of Traveler had home world. The second edition was like, eh, it's... Not, it's kind of rolled into your stat choices and everything to begin with, so it's not a separate thing. 
I like the idea of having a homeworld choice, which allows me to give you like um, special traits and qualities and stuff, like how some like a lot of RPGs have races and stuff like that. Uh, but this is this is decidedly a homebrew thing. Um, but yeah, go ahead and choose one of those homeworlds. Um, I was just gonna do independent colonies. Okay, so that gives you a number of free study periods equal to your education modifier, which for you is just gonna be a one. Well, it will be Education Modifier plus one, so for you it's going to be two. Okay. And we'll worry about those at the end of your character creation. Why is Athletics all at zero? Because if you remember, Athletics always starts at zero. Because what Athletics is, is the modifier to whenever you're making a... Just oh. a regular Dexterity, or Endurance, or Strength check. Okay, yeah. So if you didn't have those skills all at zero, every time I told you, hey, make a Strength check, you would be taking minus three. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, now, since we know that you're doing an independent colony, um, which I will put, I don't think I actually made a place for Homeworld on this character sheet, so I'll Maybe just Maybe just in description? I'll just put it as a comment on, uh, under your character name. Alright, so, now the next actual step. Uh, background skills. Background skills are on the PDF page I sent you, page number eight, near the bottom there, step three, background skills. These represent skills that you learned from the time that you were actually able to get up and walk around uh, to the time that you're 18, because proper character creation starts at 18 years old. However, obviously, when you're a youth, even though you're not going to college, you're not getting job skills, you're picking up on little hobbies, you're getting these certain interests, and these level zero skills represent that. So, go ahead and you would, you're going to pick Education Modifier plus three of these skills. So, you have an Education Modifier of one, so you're going to get four ba uh, background skills at level zero. Oh my god, I sound so fucking nasally because I got this sinus infection. Ugh. I know, I feel like my voice is kind of scratchy too. Because of my throat. Um, I'll do, let's see. Why so I just we... set them to zero, you said? Yep. Why are we all sick? <laughs> I think it's just that it's winter, so. Yeah. And it's reaching kind of that tail end of winter, so you've been through the most of it, and now it's finally hitting. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say make it education modifier plus two, um, because technically athletics should be on this list. And this way, and like, so the core rules don't give you athletics at zero, which I think is insanity. What about um, all the other players, then? No, oh, good point. All right, never mind. Go ahead. Because they already all got a plus three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're right. You're right. Carry on. I mean, we could always just tell everybody to ditch nope. one of their things, but... Carry on my wayward son. All right, we are also recording, so I would like it if you don't just sit there quietly and you actually voice your, your thoughts and what you're thinking. Oh, I'm, I'm just reading each one right now. I, I'm not really thinking about them. I, I haven't even looked through them all. Um, what was profession again? That was like working so, at your parents' store or something? No, like well, profession is profession is just like in D&D. &D, profession is like just the catch-all for it. This is what you do to make money. Okay. And it can be literally anything. There is no list to that skill. It's just you come up with what you used to do. And mm -hmm. um, if, uh, if it would ever come up, you have to remember that you have that skill on your skill list. And you can always look at me and say, hey, is my ability, was like the fact that I used to do this, does that factor in? And if we can make a good argument that it does, then yeah, I'll give you the bonus for it. But if not, then you know. Well, I'm going to say mechanic. Well, um, mechanic is its own skill, though. That's a thing. No, no, that's not for profession. Just for Oh, oh, oh okay. I thought you were saying that you were going to take the mechanic skill, and I was like, well... I, or rather, I, I thought you were saying that you were going to do profession mechanic, and I was like, well, there, there's already a mechanic skill, so... <laughs> yeah, so I think I'll do mechanic zero. Um...
Let me see. Uh, investigation was like actively looking at things. And yes. Uh, recon is passively noticing things. Investigation is actively searching things. It's the difference if you're familiar with old D and D, like uh, three point and three point five. It's the difference between search and spot. Well, considering I've never played D and D, you're not missing much. But it's it's the easiest comparison to make. Yeah, I've done I've done Baldur's Gate, but uh, yeah, but that's fifth. Ed- I think that's I've fifth done. edition. So. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that. I think D twenty peaked with Pathfinder, but that's just me. I will take. Recon zero. Okay. So you have Mechanic 0, Recon 0. You have two more. And I think that's because, like, if you're working on something, the ability to be like, hey, something's wrong here, and would be good. Okay. <laughs> Without having to actively look at what's wrong, like, to look and try and find what's wrong. And just, like, your general, like, awareness of stuff around you. Yeah. <laughs> How much does Seafarer come up in a space game? It depends. Also, I'm, this fucking typo is driving me insane. Um, yeah, Bakruden skills. Uh, anyway, but um, <laughs> but uh, you'd be surprised. Water planets are a thing. I guess that's true. Yeah. What would admin be? Administra- admin is administrative skills. It's uh, specifically stuff like um, messing with paperwork, searching catalogs, and that kind of thing. If you're like, oh, hey, I need to search this database to figure out when this person sent this email or, like, you know, who sent it to them, that would be an admin check. If it's like, hey, I want to uh, check this guy's paperwork to make sure everything is in order, that would be an admin check. It's the, bureauc- it's the bureaucrat skill. Mm-hmm. I think I'll take electronic zero as well. Okay. I think that would fit well. Didn't we get rid of something in the skills thing so that we could fit something else in there last time? Yeah, I already made that change on your character sheet. Oh, okay. And that was because there was something that was in there twice. So that's mechanic, recon, electronic. So I got one more. Uh, survival would be like outdoorsy, like yeah, on a planet. Yeah, it's, kind of it's the Bear like. Grylls skill. It's okay. how good you are at like foraging food and finding shelter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, which is more valuable than you'd think it is but um it that's that is the skill also i usually let people make survival skill checks to like make very simple primitive weapons right like if you're unarmed Uh and you're like i'm going to take like i'm gonna take my pocket knife which isn't really a weapon it's more a tool and this like big tree branch i'm gonna sharpen it and fire harden it so i have like a spear that would be a survival check or like I'm going to look around for, like, a a good length, like, tree limb, split it a little bit, and, like, lash a fucking stone in the top to make, like, a like a, a mace or whatever. Those would all be, like, survival checks. And then drive is driving vehicles. Ground vehicles, specifically. Okay. Whereas flyer would be flying ships. No. So flyer is, um... Flyer is actually the one that should be changed in this document. Flyer should be pilot. That I typed wrong. Uh, and yes, that is that is flying any kind of aircraft. Um, whether that be atmospheric, so like things that are in Atmo, or... Uh, yeah. I think I'll take 
Uh, I think I'll take Vac suit. Um, actually, I'm sorry. I need to back up, and I'm so sorry to the quarters also as well. Uh, this is the, the flyer is correct on there because of my home brewing. Flyer is specifically atmospheric craft. Pil oh, okay. Piloting of starships. Yeah, or like helicopters or shit mm -hmm. like that. Sometimes I mix up what's homebrew and what's not, and right now I have a fuck ton of cold medicine in my system, so it's really difficult. <laughs> okay, so I think that's the four. I got electronics, mechanic, vac suit, and recon. Okay, yeah, and vac suit is just, um... It's very, very, very rare that you're going to make a vac suit check. Uh, but all vac suits have, like, you need a vac suit skill of this level to be able to operate while wearing them. And if you don't have that, you suffer a minus one to all physical actions equal to how much you're missing it by. Does that make sense? So, like... Well, I was, I was thinking between that and, um... Where is it? Investigation. I, it's up to you. I, I, you know, it's your character. I'm just trying to explain how, how Vaxuit okay. works, is the fact that, like, it's almost never going to happen that I'm going to say make a Vaxuit check. But, um, like... Certain vac suits will have like requirement vac suit one, and if you don't have if you have vac suit zero, then you're suffering minus one to all actions while wearing it because you're missing you're one skill level behind that requirement. Mm. Okay. Now, now if you had vac suit one, you'd suffer no penalties. Now, vac suit zero is the like basic, not military, not armored, just like yeah, this protects you from vacuum, kind of thing. But again, because you have to get everything in sequence, like, if you plan to get, like, the more up-armored vac suit skill, you need to get zero at some point anyway, you know? Actually, uh... Could take investigation. Both of them are fine. So is Carouse. Carouse is fine. Like, all of these are good skills. That's one of the things... The only skill I would say is arguably not that useful is language, and that's because there is a universal basic language that everyone speaks and, at least some level. And and don't we have a character that can speak, like, four languages? Yeah. <laughs> Who was that? Was that Lexi? I think it was Lexi. Yeah, let me check. Yeah, Lexi speaks universal, the union language, the divine imperium language, and the trade skill language. That's right, because I'll speak I speak new Latin and universal. Oh yeah, you're going with the divine imperium again? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> okay. I like the idea of escaping it. And for the recording, we're talking about the, uh, the, the, I guess nations, countries, whatever you want to call them, the factions in my setting. We're talking about where she came from. Like kingdoms, I guess. All right, well, when you, when you come up with what you want your fourth one to be, let me know. I might just have to flip a coin here. Carouse is dealing with, like, um... Carouse is the informal socializing skill. Okay. Um, I like to refer to it as the party skill. Uh, and this is because if you remember how skills work in Traveler, skills don't have a attribute tied to them, right? Um, it's just like a general skill set. So like Carouse is the informal, uh, the informal skill for personal interaction. You could do like, hey, I'm going to go out to dinner with this person and just have a good time and talk to them and hang out with them. That would be, like, social carouse, right? Because you're impressing them with how much money you can spend on dinner and also, like, uh, just the conversation. Or you could say, like, I'm going to have a drinking contest with this individual because I think that that might be a better way to connect with them. That would be uh, endurance carouse. Um, I'm going to have a friendly, like, boxing match with this individual or, like, weightlifting uh, competition. Strength carouse, right? Um, it's, it's, Carouse is just the, I am trying to connect with this person and, uh, interact with them in a very informal way, which is distinctly different from, like, 
diplomacy or persuasion or anything like that, right? Because the skill to hang out at a party is very different from the skill to conduct yourself well at, a, at like, a ballroom. Uh, I'll just take investigation then. Okay. Wherever that is on here. Uh, so it's or it's alphabetical, so it would between be between the H and the L. I see. <laughs> on the character sheet. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> Good. I'm I'm so proud of you. Yes, you remember your ABCs. What a good girl. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> I appreciate the praise. <laughs> I know you love praise. Um, <laughs> all right. So next question. Are you going to go into a military academy or are you going to go directly into the workforce? Uh, da -da -da. Well, I say military academy. Uh, are you going to go to college or military academy? Or into the workforce. So you are now 18. This is what you're doing for the first four years. Um, if you... Is... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, please. Is there a job in the military that has to do with engineering? That would give me any engineering skill at all? Okay, so yes. Uh, Starship engineering is definitely a big thing in the Navy. Um, not so much in the other ones, uh, because engineering is, like, specifically interacting with and fixing, like, the complicated machinery that makes a starship work. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, the Navy has, like, just engineer is, like, one of the, the paths you can just take, um, which has a bunch of different engineering skills. Um, there's also at least one marine skill that will let you do it, uh, and then obviously there's, like, civilian stuff that'll let you do it. I think I'll try college for engineering. Just regular college? Okay. Yeah, just, 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 just regular old college. Alright, no, that's fine. And there's, and to be, to be clear, there's also nothing that says that you can't go to regular college and then go into the military anyway. Mm -hmm. Right? So... Um, all right, so in order to get into college, you need to pass an education skill check with a, t with a difficulty of, of seven. Um, if you have a social skill of nine or higher, you gain plus one on this check uh, because you have enough influence to kind of, you know, schmooze a little bit and see, like, you know, hey, yeah. you, can, you can let me in even if I fail my SATs, right? I'm going to wear this really short skirt when we go to this PTA meeting. Like, <laughs> all right. So since you don't have an, uh, you have a social skill of seven, you're just making a regular education skill check, which um, your education modifier is plus one. So you're going to roll 2d6 and you need to meet or beat a seven. So 2d6 plus one. Yep. Damn. Nope. All right, so that's on par. For my... It happens. That just means that you that just means that you fail out of college or that you don't pass the exam. It not a huge deal. Um, I guess I'm getting drafted. Well, not necessarily. You don't have to get drafted if you don't want to, but you can. I mean, that's probably the best way to get into the military if that's your goal. I mean, that's the path I'm going now. All right. So, uh, since you flunked out, you get drafted, which we randomly determine what branch you get drafted into. Uh, roll a d6, and it lets us know where uh, where they send you. Army! You do get to pick what branch of the army you get into. Damn, this is too real. <laughs> yeah, right. 
Uh, so you can go into uh, cavalry. Uh, cavalry in this case means usually armored vehicles of some description. Uh, I will point out that that does actually include like aircraft. Like an Apache would be considered cavalry in this, right? Um, uh, because it's any kind of like atmospheric vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, infantry, which it's the infantry. That shit hasn't changed in like thousands of years in real life. It's not going to change a thousand years here. You always need boots on ground. Um, or support. And support is like a much more general like te technical skills and stuff. Medical, cook, that kind of thing. Any of those like we're not one of the fighting skill guys. Well I guess since I'm shooting for like an engineer kind of thing that I would go into support. I will point out that that engineer is not one of the skills in support. The term it's engineer mechanic, I'm guessing. Yes. Mechanics I've is already got zero. Mechanics is on the list for support. Because the the army doesn't need people that know how starships work. They need people that know how tanks and shit work. You know? And the difference in that case between support and cavalry is cavalry would be uh, the actual tank crews. Support would be motor T. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm also going to put on some background music. I guess I can go, uh, go Cav. Okay. Give me my spurs. Alrighty. <laughs> so the first thing that happens when, uh, you go into a military, um, branch. It, well, the first, the first time you go into any career whatsoever, you get your, uh, basic training skills. The basic training skills for army... Are, and you get all of these at level zero. If you already have it at level zero, it doesn't get better. Mm -hmm. All right, it's just all at level zero. Yep, yep. Uh, and that's your choice of drive or vac suit. Okay, I'll take drive. Small arms. Okay. Oops. Uh, recon, which I think you already have at zero. I already have it, yeah. Yep. Uh, melee combat. Okay. And heavy weaponry. You also get to pick one of the athletics and raise it to level one. I think I'll... Now, I will point out that this is not increasing the stat by one. This is anytime you make a skill check, this is a bonus to it. Yeah, so like if I roll, if I needed to roll for endurance right now, I get plus one. But if I did athletics endurance, I'd get another plus one. Yeah, so it would be a total of plus two. Yeah. But it is an important distinction to note that it doesn't actually increase the stat. Because when you take damage in Traveler, that damage goes directly to your stats. So this, so like this wouldn't be like plus one HP if you add it to endurance. You know what I mean? It's just a skill check modifier. I think I'll do Dex one. Okay. All right. So, you have uh, flunked out of college, unfortunately, which you can go to your character sheet on the second page. Uh, and college education, you already wrote that you flunked. So go on down to term one, and uh, we can make the career army branch uh, cavalry.
Now we get to determine your life, uh, your um, survival check to see whether or not uh, anything bad happens during your first enlistment. Survival check for cavalry in the army is an intelligence-based skill. So roll 2d6 and add your intelligence modifier. 2d6 plus 1. I am so sorry for the recording and for you guys that I'm sitting here sniffling, but this fucking side of fiction is kicking my ass. Ripperoni. Roll to four. <laughs> oh, that's a new... No, isn't that your old four? Oh, no, that's a new one. Okay. No, yeah. I just rolled that. All right. All right, so <laughs> something bad happens your first term that you're in the army. Uh, roll a d6. All right. During your deployment, your entire unit is slaughtered to a man. You blame your commander. They manage to drum you out of service, and you gain them as an enemy for life. God damn it. <laughs> All right. So, um... I will type that into your character sheet there, mishap. Mm -hmm. And A. Uh, and roll... What was our homebrew rules for determining age? It was slash... It was, it was like... It was D3 plus 2, yeah. So roll a D3. You're starting at 18. 21. Kept. Okay. Goddamn. All right. Familiar. <laughs> so, uh, go ahead and I guess I'll put that on your character sheet too. That you get oh, God, uh, former... Uh, commanding officer from this F term one. All right. So, uh, thankfully, that didn't cause you any kind of injury or anything. You can now attempt to get into any other career that you'd like. Um, any career whatsoever. You just have to actually pass the uh, the exams to get in. And exams is not necessarily like a formal thing. It's like you just you're you're applying for the job in one way or another. The list of careers is on the PDF I sent you on page 10. Yeah, I, uh, I have it pulled up right now. Um, I think at this point, what were the nations that bordered the uh, Divine Imperium? Uh, shit, I don't have that fucking... I wish I knew that you were going to ask me these questions so I had this up. Um... I'm sorry. <laughs> I know that one of them was... Uh... Hold on, I have the th I have the thing here. I'm just gonna go dig through my shit. Hold on, wait a minute. One of them was the. <laughs> the one that was kind of like modern day U.S. Yeah. Okay. So to the Galactic East was uh the like Wild West one, um, and to the Galactic West is the one that's the uh. Like, modern-day United States. Oh, well, the one that's not really modern-day United States. It's more closer to, like, modern-day Europe. <clears throat> I think that I am going to... Which I wrote here somewhere. I just gotta find where it is. Oh, yeah, I need a rival name, don't I? We can worry about that later. Um, I think that I will flee to that other nation and try to join their navy. Okay, you say that other. There's two that we were talking about. The the the, the modern day Europe one, whatever it's called. Okay. And I'll I'll have to find my actual documents for this is all written down. Yeah, not I... not the independent systems. Um. Do you have those? Like, could you send those to me right I took, now? I took some notes, but I don't have the name for the... I have the Independent Systems, the Federation of Founding Planets, the Interstellar Trade Coalition, and the Divine Imperium. I don't so the, the, the other... The one that you... <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I missed 
notes on the one. Um. Uh, all right. What were the other? What were the other ones? I got my notepad out here. Hold on. What were those ones? So I have the independent systems. All right. So that one was the one that's like the Wild West. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then I have the Federation of Founding Planets. Okay, that's the core worlds. And then I have the Interstellar Trade Coalition. And then the Divine Imperium. And the Divine Imperium, yeah. Uh, it was the Union. I don't know what the full name of it was, but it was the Union. But I'm gonna flee to them and try to do their join their navy to get away from Commander Person. Okay. Well, in order to get into the navy, you have to pass an intelligence check. That is difficulty six. So two d six. Add your intelligence modifier and try and get in. Nine. Okay, so you managed to get into the Navy. Uh, I'm going to assume that you are um, going engineering. Yes. So well, just be technically you should have technically you should have had a minus one there because it's minus one to qualify for every previous career, but you still would have passed anyway. So. Minus. Wait, what? So, whenever you try to join a career, you suffer minus one to your qualification roll for every previous career you have. Oh. Did we do that last time? Yes, we did, which is why you started struggling so much, because you went from, like, career to career to career, because you kept on <laughs> fucking getting horrible events happening to you. <laughs> okay. And so, you by the end... roll No, you're like, I just... Did I not just say you passed anyway? Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, so I love you. Would the branch specifically be <laughs> technician slash gunner? It would, yeah. Technician slash gunner is the engineering ones. There we go. All right. So. Uh, roll a d6, and let's see which, um, skill you pick up, or that you improve, uh, in boot camp. You get better at small arms in boot camp. Choose one of the small arm specializations, whether that be pistol, rifle, etc., etc., and increase it by one. I'm assuming archaic is, like, bows and stuff? Yep, bows, crossbows, thrown weapons. I'll get pistols to one. I think that's the first job that I've succeeded. <laughs> yeah, in two whole sessions of character creation, that's the first time you've succeeded at getting into a career. <laughs> that's wild. Oh, actually, no, that's not true. I succeeded at becoming a pirate. I just failed the... Uh, Immediately mishap. after, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, speaking of which, let's see if you fail this mishap. Intelligence check, difficulty six. Is it 2d6 or just d6? No, it, it's, it, it's, it's a check, yeah. So it's 2d6, 2D6 plus, plus your one. intelligence modifier. Yep. Eight. So nothing bad happens to you your first term in the Navy for the Union. Holy crap. Yeah, right? That's fucking <laughs> wild for you. Totally and completely <laughs> unexpected. Actually, speaking of which... Speaking of which what? Oh, I'm just changing my player name. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, uh, since you survived, let's see what interesting life event happened. Roll 2d6 for me, please. Uh, seven. Okay, you had an event happen to you that has nothing to do with your time in the military. So roll another 2d6. Interesting. Uh, nine. During some liberty, you have the opportunity to travel to another world. Because you are well-traveled, you gain plus two on your next qualification roll. Qualification rolls is the I'm trying to join a new career. So, and I will point out, this does not have to be the next term. So, if you ever end up leaving the Navy, you have a better chance of your ne at getting into your next career. So I don't forget that. Oh, I, I put it in under the event where it's supposed to go. 
Oh, but I'm going to forget that it's okay. You can also right click and do comment. See this? And now when you. Right click and do comment. If you right click on something and you hit comment and then you mouse over it, it'll show you that little comment there. So, like, see, for example, how that says mishap too. And this goes for anyone that's ever doing anything with uh, Google Drive. If you right click on mishap too, and I'm going to go down to oh, comments, okay. and I'm going to type um, unit slaughtered blamed CO. CO forced her out of the army and wants her dead. Oh, you didn't like my little rifle note. <laughs> I didn't even see it. Oh, you changed it. <laughs> where it said, where, where it, under rivals slash enemies, you changed what it said. I didn't even see it. That's so okay. I was typing it slightly after you then, or at the same time, and I pressed enter slightly after. Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so now I have to roll to it. Now, yep. Now we roll to see whether or not you get promoted. Is and that's just another two d six. It's an education skill check. So two d six plus one. Seven. You need a meter beat of five, so you get promoted. Huzzah! So it just advances, yes. Our entire crew is military. Almost our entire crew. Uh. Drail is a diplomat, isn't he? Yeah, and I guess Lexi ended up go was like space fucking uh, space fucking um... She's a doctor, right? Yeah, she was a field researcher for medical uh, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. She's like Liara to Sony. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Alright. Let's roll to see how old you are. D3 plus 2. Uh, 25. Okay. And we'll worry about your Benny later. All right. Next, uh, next session for, or not session, but next term for character, uh, what's what I'm looking for here? Next term for character creation terms, I guess. Uh, oh, also being promoted to rank one gives you mechanic one for free. Oh, okay, so I'll change that then. Yep. Um, I think I'll just stay in. I'll re-up. You'll re-up? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I already finished my four-year contract, so I guess I'll re-up. Yep, all right, that's fair. <laughs> um, all right, so now we just need to determine what do you want to do as far as skill, uh, like your your improvements for this, uh, for this three to five year period do you want to go to the gym and work on yourself this is you will randomly determine one um attribute point to increase do you oh, hold on one sec lexi wants to bug me mm -hmm. sorry i'm back uh lexi wanted me to to stop and do a thing with her but we can get this done real fast first ah uh, she has work soon gosh dang it all right hold on one minute i don't want to be a horrible fiance stand no, by no, of course take your time one sec I forgot that she works at eight, not ten today, so I don't have time to do this. Do no, that after. Fine. Hold up. Uh, for those in the recording, it'll take two seconds. I'm literally just pausing the recording. Welcome back. Yep. All right. I have returned. I am sorry for that delay for you, even though for the viewers it didn't literally occur. So, um, where were we? Uh, right. Okay. So, uh, randomly determine one attribute for you to increase. Um. You can work on the skills that you picked up in boot camp. Um, you can work on the skills specifically tied to your MOS. Or, because you have a higher education, you could take night classes at college, which gives you smarter stuff. Stuff like astrogation and like administration and stuff like that. And engineering? Well, engineering is also on your, you know, your, your MOS ones because you're an engineer. Mm-hmm. It's actually much more likely for you to get engineering if you do your MOS one. So, 
So how does so if I wanted to like boost an attribute, how does that work? Like, like in, how does the roll work? It's just like getting a skill here. So basically, there is a series of tables. You can't see it because it's like in the book in my hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's literally like a table one through six, and you choose one of these categories, which is personal development, basic skills, mo like specialist branch skills, or if you have a high enough education, college courses, and then you roll a d six. And whatever one it lands on is what gets better. Okay. Now, in some cases, the 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 entry is on there twice, and that's to increase uh, the odds of you getting it. For example, because you picked technician and engineering, uh, if you roll a one or a four on that d6, if you choose your MOS skills, you're taking you're getting engineering plus one. Okay. Well, I think I'll do MOS skills then. <laughs> Excuse me. Because I do want to try and get engineering. Okay, so roll a d6. A six. Uh, so you get flyer. And it just goes up by one step. So if you don't have it, it becomes zero. If you do have it, it becomes one. So on and so forth. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Gosh. Flyer, flyer. Oh, I guess I should put... Also, you didn't put vac suit in when I told you to. Did I... It's okay, I just fixed oh. it for you. Oops. Is there a... Yes, the Starship Navy wanted to make sure you well, knew no, how to wear a spacesuit. Wasn't it back suit or something else? No. That was it was the first one you went in for the army. Oh, oh yeah. That's where I, okay. Yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I could have sworn that I didn't get back suit. Yeah. I chose like I can't remember what else. Yeah, and then you don't get you don't get your basic skills for the second career you go into, so... Yep, so you're in the Navy and you don't know how to wear a, star suit, uh, a space suit, which is funny. <laughs> I should have said nothing. No. <laughs> Alright, but okay, so you got Flyer. Uh, let's see if something bad happens to you. Survival skill check. Intelligence uh, check with a difficulty of six. East 2d6 you said survival well no it's the the the, the check is called a survival check to see oh. if you survive the term but it's an intelligence check okay so plus one uh 11 yeah you're fine uh roll 2d6 to the, roll 2d6 to the see what interesting thing happened to you today or this period sorry did you say d6 or 2d6 2d6 uh 10 uh okay you gain the opportunity to abuse your position for profit if you do gain an extra benefit roll when uh when you leave your career if you refuse gain plus two on your chance to be promoted i think i'll take the plus two to promote okay so you had so tell us a little bit about that because this is a narrative storytelling device that's what the point of this character creation system is what happened what what opportunity came up that you could have either taken uh personal wealth or reputation in the navy well it it could have been maybe i had the chance to sell information but instead i through the person who offered me the money under the bus and reported that to the Navy. Okay, yeah, I mean, that makes sense because you're an expat, uh, you're expat here. So mm -hmm. maybe, like, maybe, like, the Divine Imperium was like, hey, we hear about, like, there's some troop movements we might want to know about. Could you tell us about that? We'll pay you. Like, something like that. Yeah. And then instead of taking the money, I reported that to uh, the new, the Navy that I'm in. And uh, they, uh, in return, they were like, oh, here's like uh, an award or, you know, like in like an RCOM or whatever. Yeah. Bronze Star. You decided not yeah. to post on the War Thunder forums. <laughs> 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 That's really funny. 
All right, let's see if you get promoted. Education skill check with an additional plus two because of that. So 2d6 plus three? Yep. You, uh, bas nine. you basically had to roll snake eyes. <laughs> I rolled a nine. Yeah. All right, so you get promoted. Uh, that gives you Vac Suit at level one. You just skip level zero and you get level one. Oh, I can actually use spacesuits now. <laughs> Alright, and then D three plus two for age. Yep. All right. Uh I am twenty eight. Fast tracking. I'm actually getting decent age rolls. Yeah. Alright. Goes to the next step of uh, character creation. Um, you are now, by the way, uh, because I know that you're retired military, like me, so you get it. You are now Petty Officer uh, Third Class. Okay. It's even better, because I was actually in Navy ROTC in college, so I kind of know the ranks. I was, because you would probably, you probably know the Navy ranks better than I do, though. Eh, less than Some you think. Ranks. Less than you think. Marine ranks are different from Navy ranks. Uh, but that's... They're, Marine ranks are more similar to Army ranks. Yeah, it's, it's, you're, you're E4. Um, I'm just gonna stay in. I'll do it next time. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's, uh, again, what do you want? Do you want personal development? You want to work on your basic training? You want to go to we night do classes? MOS again. All right, roll a d6. Uh, two. Mechanic. Increase so your mechanics go by one. It's okay, it's so just plus two. one. Yep. Yep. That seems rather high. It is. It's very high, considering the fact that the baseline difficulty of any role in the game is eight on 2d6. Two is really big. So I'm good at working on, like, ground vehicles and shit. Huh? Yeah, like, and, and when I say ground vehicles, I don't specifically mean, like, tr treads and wheels. Like, grab vehicles count, too. This mm -hmm. is, like... Non-spaceships. Yeah, simple vehicles. You know? Does, would this include and simple, aircraft? Yes. It, well, what, okay. it would include aircraft from our perspective, right? Just like, nothing space. Yeah, or... like, helicopters and fighter jets would still... Okay. be mechanic because they're in setting they're considered low tech vehicles you know okay so then it's uh so now we determine whether or not something bad happens to you so 2d6 make a and it is an intelligence based check a three so something did happen <laughs> yes roll 2d6 or i'm sorry roll 1d6 by fault a one Oh! Am I dead? <laughs> no, but you have an option here. You are severely injured in the line of duty. You can either roll twice on the injury table and take the worst result, or you can assume you roll a two. Uh, the injury table is, I believe, a d6 roll. So you can guarantee that you roll a two, or you can roll twice and take the worst. I'm assuming that a higher number is better for the injury. Yes, it means you're less injured. So I will I will roll two <laughs> twice and take the worst result. Okay, so roll a d6 two times. Well, oh, all right. <laughs> Never okay. Considering your rolls, that was a ballsy move. <laughs> all right, injury table. You are nearly killed. Reduce one physical characteristic by d6 and reduce the other two by two. Now, so bear in mind... physical is dex, endurance, and strength? Yep. You basically have to pick endurance or strength here, because if you pick dex and you roll a six on that roll, you're going to die. So everything's just reduced by two? No. Pick one of the three. Pick strength, endurance, or dexterity, and we're mm -hmm. reducing that by d6. The other I get, two... I just rolled a d6 and rolled a two. Okay, but for the record, you do have to declare which one... Oh, I was gonna I was gonna do it for uh endurance. Okay. So yeah, everything is reduced by two. However, 
you do get the opportunity to see if they'll cover your because you were in the navy so you are mustered out there's no way around that you are nearly killed but they might cover your uh your medical fees that's one of the that's one of the things about the navy and like the military ones is while they do have the highest chance of actually seriously injuring you they also tend to have better chances of if you survive the event them covering your medical bills hmm. so how do what do i do well now, let's let's first again this is a narrative storytelling thing so let's first uh what happened what what happened when you were in engineering that resulted in you nearly dying in engineering well i don't exactly know what the technology is well i mean you know like, come, come up with think star trek or mass effect you're working on the drive core you're working on the engines you're working on something high tech in starships because the thing that i think of when nearly dying in engineering is something fucking exploded okay there's no reason that that can't be the answer So um, I'm not sure what exploded, but something exploded. I mean, who knows? Maybe you don't even know, like in character, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're you're sitting there working, minding your own business, and then all of a sudden you hear shouting from the other end of engineering, and then all of a sudden things are on fire. There's a there's a hole breach, like. Uh, you were union, right? Yeah. Let me... Let me generate a name for a starship for you. All right. Aboard the Union military ship Albany, uh, which was a light frigate class that you were stationed on, uh, something exploded in engineering when you were working. You don't know what it was, but all you know is that you heard screaming, and as you were looking up to see what was going on, all of a sudden, all the air was getting sucked out of engineering. Um, and, like, you were in the middle of, like, a decompression... Uh, you got severely injured both due to the exposure of vacuum and also, like, shit hitting you. Because, like, boxes and, like, saws and hammers and stuff would all be, like, flying out. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. An explosive decompression... In engineering. Parentheses. Not her fault. Close parentheses. Resulted in... What's your character's name? Novia? Yeah, Novia. All right, so first let's roll a, a d3 plus two for your age. Five, so I'm, what, 33? Nine, zero, one, two, three, yep. <laughs> All right, and um, now let's, look, let's see if uh, you get any coverage for... Um, well, the first thing we should do is we should do your benefits. Because you get one, two benefits. Because you get one benefit per term served. Benefits are... <coughs> excuse me. Benefits are when you get out, you get, like, pension or money or stuff like that. Um, and it happens every single time you leave a career. You are technically leaving your career right now. You get one per term served... Um, and you also gain a additional benefit roll because you were rank one. Well, you were technically rank two, but the next break point is having rank three, so. Uh, mm -hmm. now, now you can split this between getting material benefits or getting cash benefits. You can only roll on the cash benefits table 
three times throughout your entire life. And that's across all careers. So, uh, tell me... When we say material benefits... So, material benefits can be anything from, um, you know, getting... Uh, they, they give you a... Uh, they give you, like, a gun, right? Like, so like hey, you know, we, we like the thing that you did. We you remember that, uh, that one asshole that you tackled that was, like, stuck behind our lines? Well... We took his 1911 and we plaqued it for you. Then here you go. And then, like, when you become an adventurer, you go, you know what? This is still a decent sidearm, you know? So, uh, or, like, it could be, um... And I'm assuming you roll for this? Or... Yep, yep. Uh, or um, it could I'll be... Do... Oh, okay. I'll do mats for one and cash for the other. Well, you have three. Because you have one... Oh, I thought it... You have one per successful term, and then you got a bonus one for getting promoted. Oh, okay. So, two... Uh, now the things to consider in one cash the things to consider are that um you can repair the injuries that were done to you but that is extremely expensive it's very likely the military is going to cover it but anything that doesn't get covered you will have to go into medical debt for um mm -hmm. so that's always an option two uh again remember that you can only roll cash three times throughout your entire life so <laughs> Well, that, that's why I'm only doing cash for one of them and mats for the other two. Okay, I'm just, you know, just saying. Yeah. All right, so what are we doing first? Uh, we'll do the first, one of the material ones first. Okay, so just roll a d6. Uh, six. Ooh! Okay, you have a choice here. You can either get a ship's boat or other small craft... Uh, small craft are are technically starships, but they're starships that are under like the 100 ton limit where you normally like, which is when you start being considered a proper crewed starship. Mm -hmm. um, do you play Mass Effect before? I have, yes. Okay, so you remember, so you have the Normandy, right? The Normandy is a starship, right? Mm -hmm. But you remember whenever you would go to planet, they would get in the Grizzly, and the little Grizzly shuttle would bring them down because the Normandy couldn't actually like. Yeah, like the Kodiak. Realistically, yeah, Kodiak Grizzly, whatever they were called. Uh, that could, like, it couldn't realistically get on planet very comfortably. Mm -hmm. so that the, the Kodiak, that's small craft. So, okay. so you are either getting a ship's boat or other small craft like that. So, like, Kodiak tier vehicle. Um, or you're getting two shares uh, in a proper starship. Shares are, like, portions of the mortgage. Uh, in this case, um, any ship share reduces the cost of a starship by 1 million credits before we calculate the mortgage out. I think we have multiple ship shares already. I think we have, like, four. I think we have, like, four million... Uh, four million off of a, a we starship. Six. We have six? Okay. Yeah, we have six million off. But to be to be clear, uh, if I'm if I scroll over to like the basic like uh, Firefly class trader, you know, like what would be mm -hmm. the Firefly class, um, the cost for that is forty five million credits. So like six million is like fi like fifteen percent, which isn't bad. Eight million. So I could make it eight million off, or I could get like a smaller craft. Yeah, which might not be a bad idea, because a lot of the cheaper starships that you guys might be looking into might not have any actual, like, guns on them. And, like, I'm some actually, and like some of yeah. the small craft do actually have weaponry. I I was actually going to take the small craft, I think. Yeah, I think I'll do the small craft. Okay. And we'll, we'll discuss what the small craft is uh, later. Okie dokie. But this would be, this would be like, uh, for example... Um, Zarina's character, uh, was, like, a interceptor pilot, right? Like, her naval ship, when, when you launch fighters, you're not launching full starships, you're launching little, like, 50-ton, mm -hmm. like, this is a one-manned starship that, that is literally just engine, cockpit, guns, right? That would be a small craft. Now, I think that a, a, a um, a, uh, 
interceptor, like a naval interceptor like that would probably be outside of the, the financial limits that the game gives you for this reward, but, you know, that gives you an idea, right? Mm -hmm. Um, okay. So, and then, do you want to do the other, uh, material or cash this time? Let's do cash this time. Okay, roll a d6. Uh, four. Uh, 10,000 credits. You just add that right into your wallet on the character sheet. Where? Bottom right, page one. It'd be cash in account. Yep. Oops. And uh, the other one was another material, right? Mm-hmm. Roll another d6. A four. You get a free weapon. And this is when I get around to, and I'm not sick anymore, uh, when I when I get around to typing out the equipment and everything, it's literally just like, uh, I think that the limits are any weapon that's worth 500 credits or less and is of a tech level of 10 or lower. Okay. So that's that's most kinetic weapons. Mm-hmm. Like I like the the really high end so kinetic I got weapons a gun, like a, a tiny ship and ten k. Yep, and so like the 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 really high level kinetic weapons like the fucking rail guns and stuff that would be higher than TL uh, ten, but like, you know like most uh, uh, like we're to give you an idea we're at tech level seven or eight in real life right now mm, probably closer to eight uh, at like the current year, uh, and every tech level is really about 150 to 200 years of development. Mm -hmm. So, like, we're looking at mostly, like, the guns that you'd imagine we have right now, but, like, they're they're made more efficient. They have, like, caseless ammo and, like, ammo counters in the... Like, like, like Halo guns. Halo human guns. We recognize mm -hmm. them as, like, human weapons, but they're clearly more efficient, you know? Yeah. And then, because it's a weapon and not specifically a gun, you could also, like, you could very easily just be like, yeah, I'm taking a fucking katana. Like, it's any weapon, melee or ranged. Oh, didn't I? Didn't you what? I gained study periods, too, that I never did. Uh, those happen at the end of your character creation. Oh, okay. Because we need to see what, um, we need to see what skills you have. Okay. Uh, now we need to see what happens for your injury. So, um, it costs 5,000 credits per attribute point to be restored. You lost six attribute points, two across every single attribute. Now, the way we determine how much your insurance is going to cover is roll 2d6 and add what your rank was when you got hurt. So you were... 2d6 plus two? Yep. Seven. They're going to cover 75% of costs. So that's 5,000 times six. 30,000 credits. They're going to cover... Wait, wouldn't, it, wouldn't it be... Oh, it's it's five. I thought you said it was 6k per. Nope. Five, uh, it's 5,000 per. Uh, and you had six damage. So 5,000 times six is 30,000 credits. They're going to cover 75%, leaving you with... 7,500. 7,500 credits uh, to uh, out of pocket, which you can pay. You can pay. You have enough money in the bank to pay that well, if you want to remove that. I'll just pay that now. Yeah, or you can go into metal with it if you want to. I'll just I'll just pay that now. Okay. Frankly, it is incredible that with the severe near fatal injury result and not 100% coverage of your uh, insurance, you were still able to. Uh, so do I mark down 2,500 in the cash and then just put my stats back to what they were? Yep. Sorry, was that... You kind of cut out there. Yep. 100%. Just put them exactly where they were. Now, you probably have some gnarly scars. Mm-hmm. But, like... I can't believe I got out of that. See, this is why I wanted to take the cash pay. 
actually. <laughs> I kind of had. Well, I was kind of leaning. I was kind of leaning towards you getting, taking two of the caches to because to to see, but you ended up rolling pretty good on the cash roll, so that was fine. I think I rolled a. I rolled the highest. I rolled a six. No, you didn't roll a six. I can tell you right now, you didn't roll a six. You rolled a four. Didn't I? No, because a six would have been fifty. Oh, I did. I... That's right. No. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I. No, I'm telling you right now, because the six was the ship was the small craft or two ship shares. I have the. Oh, I that's have right. I rolled materials first. That's yeah. right. I should have rolled cash first. <laughs> Actually, the ship is pretty good. I'm I'm glad I got the six on the mat. What would have happened if I rolled six again? Would I just gotten a second ship? Uh, you well, no, you you would have gotten the two ship shares. I would have just gotten the yeah. two shares. Yeah. Uh, so. You can, if you want, start uh, continue to go into new careers and keep going and get more muster out benefits and more skills and everything. But I will point out that aging begins to manifest on the term you hit 35 years or older. You are 33, meaning that your next session or your next term will start suffering aging penalties. Now, the way that aging works is you roll 2d you roll 2d6, uh, add the number of previous terms. And you just need to roll a positive number. Is there any way that I can shoot for engineering? Civilian. Civilian? Um, yeah, there's some civilian. Citizen. Yeah. Uh, citizen worker could work. Um, let me check that skill list there. Citizen worker has engineering in there. As well as mechanic and electronic and all that. Uh, another one could be scout. Going scouts could do it. Uh, yeah, if you go the if you go uh, courier uh, or explorer, actually, courier or explorer both have engineering. Um, I will try to get into the scouts. Then. Okay. Yeah, and again, the scouts. I know people think like, oh, the fucking mailmen, but in this sitting in this setting. Male men are actually pretty badass because like yeah they're flying ships around the, like because they have to because it's the only way to get information around reasonably yeah it's quickly. it's space pony express yeah so like riding shot like most courier ships are armed and armed relatively heavily um all right so in order to get into the scouts the scout corps uh you need to roll an intelligence check and you suffer minus one for every previous career uh, you would you have had two previous careers, so that would be minus two. But I get plus two, plus from two that from that. Yep, event. plus two from that previous event, so it, it washes out. So roll two d six and add your intelligence modifier, and six, you're okay. trying to beat a five, meet or beat a five. Uh, ten. Okay, so you managed to get into the scouts. Now what branch though? Uh, well, courier, which is the mailman, uh, has engineering in the list. Uh, explorer, which is the literal. Point this ship in the direction, activate the jump drive, let's see if there's anything there. Nothing's here? Okay, turn around, let's go refuel, get back to the same spot, point it, like, 0.7 degrees to the left. Jump. Like, and you just go a parsec in every direction, trying to see if you can find, like, a planet or a star that's interesting. Okay, I'll do, uh, Explorer. <laughs> Sorry, my mom is bugging me. <laughs> okay, you're so fine. uh all right, so you're going to explore. Uh let's roll to see what you get. Do you want to work on your uh attributes? I will point out um Scout is an interesting one because Scout does not let you increase your social skill. Instead, if you roll a 6 on the increase attribute, you get the jack of all trades skill. Which is big. What does Okay. Jack of all trades is if you do not have a skill, use your jack of all trades skill instead. So if you roll a six on that, that's you get every skill at zero. Okay. Um, or you can work on your your basic. Uh, actually, no. When you go in, you have to choose a service skill. So roll a d six. Yeah. And then later on, you could you can make those choices. But jack of all trades is huge. Three. There's a reason why jack of all trades is the only skill in the game that you are not allowed to raise above like two in character creation because it's literally just if you don't have this skill it's 
I think the description of Jack of all trades is add your rank in Jack of all trades to like any skill or like it's use that skill or Jack, whichever's higher. I'll have to double and check, but it's, it's really, really, really powerful. All right. So three gain another ranking mechanic. God damn. Mechanic okay. three. <laughs> that is insanity. <laughs> Oh, sorry for the sniffles. So, so how many ranks in mechanic do I need until I can just build something? <laughs> uh, I think that would actually. There are rules for it, but I'll give you an example. Hold on, let me let me flip to the skills page here real quick. Go to mechanics. Um. So, in order to repair a broken down vehicle in the field with average tools, you would make a difficulty eight mechanics check. That takes 1d6 minutes. With plus 3, that means that you would be rolling 2d6. Uh, add either your intelligence or education modifier, your choice, which I think both of those are plus 1 at this point. Mm -hmm. um, meaning that as long as you didn't roll a 4... No, as long as you didn't roll a 3 or lower, you would be able to fix a, a totally broken down vehicle in the field with just a regular toolbox in like 1 to 6 minutes. Jesus. The duct tape and spit skill. <laughs> All right, so what do I roll next here? All right, so now we're whether rolling, uh, yep, whether or not you get hurt, which is an endurance check, and you're an explorer? Yes. Okay, so that's endurance, and the difficulty is seven or higher. So 2d6. 2d6 plus one. Yep, and meet or beat a seven. Ten. Okay, you're fine. 2d6 to determine what event happens. Six. You spend several years jumping from world to world in your scout ship, with nothing noteworthy except for the beauty that you get to see. Choose one of the following skills. Astrogation at level one, electronics at level one, navigation at level one, pilot small craft at level one, or mechanic at level one. You gain this for free. So sorry, it was pilot small craft... Um, pilot small craft, astrogation, astrogation. navigation and electronics and then mechanic at one but obviously you're not going to pick mechanic so what does um astrogation specifically do in traveler um plotting a jump is that just course. plotting points or? yeah plotting a jump course um does that only apply to the pilot well you can have someone else do it okay the person that works the computer doesn't have to be the person that actually pushes the throttle Someone has to uh, someone has to work the Don't astrogation. Do we have computer. a pilot? Yeah, we do. We have a Who's our pilot. Zarina. Zarina. She was. Yeah. Because you had. She has the astrogation, I think, too. I don't know. I can't see her sheet. So. Hello, puppy. Sorry, Mouser's bugging me. Uh, let me check. She does not have astrogation. Drell might have it though. Let me check Drell and let me check Lexi's. Drill has astrogation at zero. Yeah, okay, so Drill at least has astrogation zero, meaning that he can make it work. Um, which, like, the thing with astrogation, right, is uh, if you look at the... Oh, hold on one sec. What's up, babe? I have absolutely no idea. Hey, I'm naked, by the way. Hmm? I'm naked. All right, I love you. Have a good day at work. I love you. I'm off at 4 a.m. All right, I will 100% be asleep by then. I still don't know if I'm working tomorrow. They still haven't set the schedule out. Anyway, sorry, I'm back. Um, yeah, so the thing with astrogation is that, it, like, with all skills, if you look at the, the way that skills work in Traveler, you can always make skills easier by taking more time, right? So, like... Let's, let's, let's flip to astrogation real fast in my rulebook. Ba, 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 ba. All right, so astrogation. Plotting a course to a target world, making a standard jump, is only a difficulty for astrogation check that takes 1d6 times 10 minutes. So, like, Drill could plot a simple, like, jump if nothing's going on, because it could take anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour. And it, for the most part, you guys have time to just, like, dick around and not do anything 
Jarrell says, hey, I'm going to plot this course. You say, okay, I'm going to make some coffee. Maybe he rolls badly on the timetable, and you end up, like, sitting there making fun of him for a little bit. But he gets it done, right? The only time you really would need, like, higher level astrogation is if it's something like, you are getting shot at, you are being chased, and you need to make a jump to get the fuck away. Because remember, this is 1d6 times 10 minutes is the, the, the baseline scale. And a single combat round is, like, 6 seconds. So plotting a, a jump that occurs in a reasonable amount of time in combat uh, suffers minus 2, minus 4, minus 6 to the penalty. You know what I mean? You know... I do have... Would Pilot Small Craft apply to the ship that I just got? Yes, it's, it's, it's actually very specifically, it is the skill for that ship. Which pilot skill would apply to the ship that we buy as a group? Uh, pilot Small a Starship Base. But I will point out that... Nobody uh, has that one. Yes, Misto does. Zarina. Because they're the same, they're the same family. So, Zarina has pilot small craft at one, which means that she has the other pilot uh, skills at zero. You always get all like the family at zero, so she can pilot your small craft very easy. Yeah, but not if she's piloting the larger craft. This is true. If you take it, then you guys have two pilots: one for the the small craft and one for the. Uh... I think I'll take pilot. Okay. So like, I, I mean. Honestly, it makes sense RP-wise if I just got a fucking ship that I want to learn how to fly it. Uh, they, that's valid. There is nothing wrong with having two people with having some some skill redundancy. Pilot especially is a big one because what happens if Serena gets knocked out? Mm -hmm. And you guys get to the, the shuttle and you're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, I think it would be good for me to uh, know how to pilot. Especially since I just got a ship. So realistically, she'd probably want to learn how to fly the ship that she just got. Yeah, all right. Fair enough. All right, I will point out that uh, when you're working the scouts, you you might not necessarily be the one in charge of your ship, right? Mm -hmm. So the high level, maybe the reason you got on the this particular scout is because you had that small craft. And they were like, you know what, we need a shuttle person. Yeah. Actually, that makes sense, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so we rolled your, your life event. Um, now we roll to see whether or not you get promoted. Uh, 2d6, add your education modifier. Uh, what was the event name? <laughs> Um, exploration, really. Because the description is, is that you you just jump from world to world with no notes aside from seeing beauty and experiencing life itself. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry for stifling. Fuck. And uh, so, what was the advance roll? Uh, education model. Uh, education check. So, 2d6 plus 1? Yes. Well, 2d6 plus whatever your education modifier is. So 6 is what I rolled. Okay, so you don't get promoted, but if you fail the promotion roll, nothing bad happens. You just you just don't get promoted. Okay. You're putting an action. Yeah, I'm putting a, a thing in the event. Okay. Roll a d3 plus 2 for your age. Uh, I am 37. 37, yep. Now we need to make your aging check, which is 2d6 minus the number of terms you have completed up to this point, which is going to be 5. So 2d6 minus 5, you need to roll a positive number. 7. You're fine. No penalty. All right. Would you like to go into term six? Yes. I okay. will do another term in the scouts. Okay. And you're going to stay explorer, I assume? Yes. And then was it 2d6 well, plus first, endurance? First, we have to see what skill you want to take. Do you want to get oh, right. a skill for being a scout in general? Do you want to take a skill specifically related to, ex to uh, stellar um, exploration? 
do you want to take uh a increase in attributes or potentially jack of all trades or do you want to take night courses i will point out the night courses does also have jack of all trades on the table the night court the, so the 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 skill the attribute one is strength dexterity endurance intellect education or jack of all trades the the go to college is medic navigation seafaring demolitions science or jack of all trade what is the jobs one uh, electronics, piloting, engineering, science, stealth, and recon. I think that I will do uh, night classes. Okay, roll a d6. Just uh, three. Uh, seafaring. Because you have explored, because you have explored a water planet, you had to learn how to pilot a boat, and you did. And that's it, all the seafaring. All the seafaring ones. You oh, understand. Yeah. You understand how vessels move in water. Because moving through water, I know that like the the there is always the trope that like space is the new ocean, but the way that physics work in water is very 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 different from the way that physics work in space. So you need to have a different skill set for that. Okay. Um, Alright. Uh, 2d6 to see whether or not something bad happens to you. Endurance check. Difficulty 7. 10. You're fine. 2d6 to see what interesting thing happens to you. An 11. Ooh. Okay. During your time in the scout service, you are contracted to deliver a message for an important politician in your uh, nation. Either gain diplomat as a skill, or gain plus four on your next promotion check. I'm going to take the plus four to promotion. All right, so tell us about that. Tell us about this message here. This also could tie into Drail, because I think Drail was a union representative, wasn't he? Or was he Federation? He was Federation. Ah, uh, well, I mean, even so, like, right, you're, you're he could be going to him, or from him to a union representative. But it, that's that's only if that's only if you want to uh, connect him. Speaking of Drail, we're almost at the end here, and I'm not pulling in another person to chat for this recording, so. Yeah. Um. You can just ask him, hey, do you want this to be a thing in the, the Discord? Uh, her life event that she rolled, Zarina, was that she got contracted to be a, um, an envoy for a very important diplomatic message. And I think she's considering asking Drail if Drail is going to, wants the message to have been from or to him. Are you asking, Drill? Mm-hmm. Okay. I would have liked to have done that, because I'm just kind of sitting here in silence. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, um, I, I, I did, yes. <laughs> Sorry. This is good training, because remember, we are going to be streaming this game, so, this like... This is true, yes. You have, um, to, you have to remember to explain what you're doing, because we cannot see you. Uh, He said that he would be down with being involved in that. Okay, so then the rest of that coming up is you. Do you want to be to him, from him? Maybe it would be a message. Because it, it's because technically I'm in the scouts for the union, right? Yeah. Well. So. Yeah, probably. 
Uh, I mean, it's so really up to you. Be... That's really up to you because there is a like, there is a technically, uh, politically neutral courier faction, um, and that is the biggest one. But every nation also runs its own private courier faction, uh, for messages that they don't necessarily want to get into the hands of other. Well, this nations. is Explorer too. Well, right, but like they they kind of fall under the same like. Um, I am going to say that uh, it's a message from him to a union politician. Okay. Um, but I don't know the contents <laughs> of that message because I wouldn't have opened it. Oh yeah, I, I was gonna say, why would you have known? <laughs> like. <laughs> From the Federation, uh, what was Drill's title when he got done? He was fairly high up there, wasn't he? Yeah, he was pri a Secretary Prime. So he was like the the right hand man of a planetary governor. But for whatever reason, this letter was important enough that uh, it caused the politician I delivered it to to attempt to pull some strings to get me promoted. Since it's a it's a plus four. You say? Yeah, it's it's big. Yeah. It, it's it's a it's basically you cannot fail getting promoted. You have to roll snake eyes to fail getting promoted. Which Don't put that out yeah, there. for you. <laughs> Alright, let's roll to see if you get promoted. 2d6. Don't roll snake eyes. Is it... Do I get a plus? Education modifier, yeah. Education. So uh, you so you actually couldn't <laughs> fail. I mean, technically you could because snake eyes always fails. But your, your modifier was large enough that even with snake eyes you would have gotten the 7. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I rolled two sixes, though. So. Yeah. All right, so you get promoted. Super promoted? No, no. <laughs> joking. <laughs> you just get promoted to rank, uh, to, well, really rank one. You are now officially considered a scout instead of like a, uh, like an intern, basically. Mm -hmm. All right, roll two, uh, D3 plus two for your age. Uh, slash R D. Uh, you are 40. 40. On the nose. Uh, roll 2d6 for your aging. Plus 6. Get a positive number. 2d6 minus 6. Yeah, 2d6 minus 6. You're, you're nope, good. got a negative 1. Okay. That's still not terrible, terrible. Uh, aging at negative 1. I got a sneeze coming on. Fuck. Ah. Reduce. Choose two physical attributes and reduce them both by 1. You're starting to feel your age here. I saw that you reduced endurance and strength. Right? Yeah, that's still one. Yep. I saw that you reduced endurance and strength. It's not enough to make it so that you can't do the things you used to do, but you're starting to feel it when you do the things you used to do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was actually going to stop at term six, too. Okay, that works. All I, right. Well, I wasn't. I was going to stop whenever I hit age 40. Yeah, well, okay, fantastic. So uh, I happened to hit it exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you get three bennies for being in the scouts, one for each successful term, and uh, one for being promoted to rank one. Now the question is, do I take two cash ones, or do I just take one cash one? I will say that the scouts pay very well. Yeah, but because the scouts are not only probably one of... decent the... material options too, right? Yes, the scouts have some of the best like muster out bonuses in the game uh and the reason for that is very 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 simple 
because they're also the only fa they're also the only uh, job that one of the during character creation job risks is you end up out of gas in the middle of fucking nowhere in your starship and are condemned to slowly suffocate, freeze, or starve over the course of several weeks. Like, damn. Well, it's a good thing I didn't. Yeah, get it's that. a thing. It's a thing that can happen. Like, you're an explorer. You jump out in the middle of fucking nowhere. What happens if you miss jump and you can't get back? Like. Uh, let's do a map bonus. Okay, so just D6. A six. <sighs> okay. Um, you gain possession of a light freighter. Excuse me? Well, I'm sorry. You gain possession of a scout ship. You okay. just get your scout ship, which is basically like you like the Millennium Falcon class kind of thing. So I got two ships now? <laughs> well, no. That's the the first one is like a shuttle. This is a yeah. this is a starship. Like you have you just get a starship. Okay. You, you own the Millennium <laughs> Falcon. Now, the the exact description is is you possess a scout ship with 25% of the mortgage paid off. You must roll 1d6 times on the starship quirk table. So it's an old quirky ship. Because the idea is that this ship is probably decades, if not centuries old. She's got her quirks. She's got her character. Just like the Firefly or the Fal or the uh, from Star from well Firefly, well the Serenity from Firefly or the Millennium Falcon or uh, the Ghost from Rebels. Pick a, pick a famous starship in, in this media. It, it, the captain will always treat that like another character. It's got its mm -hmm. own quirks, its own little, like, she doesn't like it when you do this kind of things, right? So, we'll roll on the starship quirk table later. Uh, but 25% of the mortgage is paid off, and those 6 million ship shares, those credits, those go get applied before paying off the mortgage. So they're, they get off the principal, meaning they're even more valuable. Okay. Uh, okay, so congratulations on the fact that you are the owner of a ship. <laughs> and a shuttle. <laughs> yeah. You are... That That probably makes you captain. On, like, real talk, I would talk with the party. That almost certainly makes you the actual, like, official on-paperwork captain of the crew. Because it's my ship? Yeah, because you're the, <laughs> you're the one that owns the ship. As far as documentation and paperwork goes, you're you're the one that's going to be written down as Captain So-and-So. That doesn't mean you're the pilot, right? Like, you've seen Firefly, right? Yeah. Mal owns no, the ship. No, I haven't. Oh, no. well, unfortunately. But I know, but I, I know the basics of what yeah, you're talking about. Yeah, Mal owns the ship, but uh, Wash is the one that pilots the damn thing. Yeah, the captain's Real always... Realistically, what does Mal actually do on the ship? Like, nothing. Like, Mal is Mal's job is, like, being the heart of the crew and making everyone work together. But, like, he doesn't actually really do anything shepherds in charge but joker flies yeah yeah i know what you're talking about i got you i'm picking up what you're putting down all right second roll uh by the way if you roll another if you roll another six uh what you get is another 25 percent of the mortgage paid off Uh, so what what she gets, Zarina, is she gets a scout ship with 25% of the mortgage paid off. The ship shares that you guys have are getting taken off the principal before the mortgage gets applied. So it'd be 25% off immediately and then another 6 mil off? Yeah. Um, I will do cash. Okay, roll a d6. Five. You get 50,000 credits. I told you, the scouts pay very well. They're not, they don't make as much money as like celebrities and politicians. But in terms of like the, we actually worked for our money jobs, they're one of the best paying jobs in the game. Now I have to decide, do I want to roll for another material or do I want to roll for cash? I will point out that, um... The rules for buying equipment 
are that. Da, 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 da. Where is it? Oh, do I not? Did I not write it out yet? Uh, the rules for buying equipment is uh, that uh, you can't spend more than a certain percentage. Oh, here it is. Uh, you may choose to roll the cash benefit stable three times across your entire lifetime. Regardless of starting credits, you cannot buy any equipment during character creation worth more than 25000 or with a, uh, a legal class of four, uh, four or five. Those are, like, really expensive, like, explosives and shit like that. You can't just, like, pop down to Walmart and buy mm -hmm. a grenade launcher. Um, and also, on top of that, uh, there is another one, uh, a optional rule that I use that I don't seem to have written down here. That's something like, you can't spend a grand total of more than... I think 15 or 20% of your like starting wealth on equipment. Yeah. Yeah. Do I want materials? <laughs> Cause I got, I feel like 50, you have, 50 is not bad. It's not. And you do have a gun. The big thing that you don't have is armor. Yeah, I have, but I will point out I that armor a... isn't even necessarily, I'll just I'll just tell you what the the possible results for the material roll are. Uh, if you roll a one, you get another ship share, which is another one million off your ship. Uh, if you roll a two, increase your intelligence by one. If you roll a three, increase your education by one. A four or a five is another weapon result, which can be either a better weapon or an additional weapon. Um, and if you roll a six, that's another twenty five percent off your your starship. And I'm guessing cash is what, like ten grand a roll. Uh, twenty thousand for what? One and two is twenty thousand. Three and four is thirty thousand. Five and six is fifty thousand. Oh, so way higher than I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. I also point out armor is not that expensive. Because even the even the education or intelligence bonuses would be good because that would bump me up to two. To a plus two, yeah. That's and that's a big. Honestly, getting the attribute bu uh, buff here would probably be the best result for you. Yeah, because I was looking when you mentioned education and intelligence, I'm like, I'm at eleven. If I get yeah. twelve, I'm at getting two. getting either of those attribute buffs would probably be the best result. Um, since I already have 52.50, or 52.5, I think I'm going to roll for equipment. Okay, D6. Or whatever. Basically, don't roll Two. a one. Okay, increase your intelligence by one. Okay. 12 and 2. Okay. okay. Uh, now we need to go back and do your benefit for being an independent co uh, colony. Um, the way that this works is that you are basically getting, um... A number of free skill training periods equal to your uh, education modifier have, plus one. I do one. actually have a question for you. Okay. Uh, you're typing out 10,000 credits and 50,000 credits with the thing on the top. Yes. Is that like just how credits are done? In yeah. That's just an aesthetic thing. Okay. I will change my one on the other side today. I think it looks more sci-fi. I wish I had a better explanation for it. I just think it looks more sci-fi. No, I'm down with it. I can dig it. All right. Now, Wait, sorry. So what do I have to do now? In order to learn a new skill or to improve an existing one, a traveler must study. Studying is defined as spending a full eight hour workday examining additional documents or educational documents and programs to teach yourself the skill in question. In order to do this, you must have access to an individual who can teach you the skill or access to educational texts appropriate for this level of proficiency. Every 20 days spent studying is considered a study period. A skill requires a number of successful study periods equal to one plus the skill level being learned. Um, at the end of the study period, make an education check. If you succeed, the period was productive. If you fail, lose D3 times five uh, days, and you must attempt to relearn them. So basically, you are instantly doing two uh, study period checks. But you must claim what skill you're trying to get them on. Now we're not increase we're not uh, including your education bonus here because you got that from mustering out. Wait, why do I get two? Because it's because it, it's your education modifier plus one. Is it? Yeah. For independent colonies. Yeah, I I didn't write that it should be plus one, but think about okay. it. If your education modifier is zero, that would mean that you don't have any. 
So that would mean that you would get no benefit for choosing that race. Oh, you're right, you're right, you're right, yeah. So I get two study periods, so I roll D6, you said? Well, what is happening first is you need to tell me what skills you're trying to study. And in theory, what this is, is that this is kind of like retroactive. This is saying throughout your entire life, you've kind of absentmindedly picked at this hobby of yours. And when you say skills, do you mean like general skills or like one specific one? Like for like if I said pilot, is it all three pilots or is it like pilot starship base? So when you get one of those skills that has a family, if you get one level, you gain all of them. So like let's say for example you gain engineering, which I will point out you don't actually have engineering. You don't have engineering. I know. I was I was going to pick If it. you get engineering, the first level in it gives you zero for all of them. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, and, and then, then after that, that you have the special one. Yeah, exactly. See, but see, I could do engineering, but we also don't have anyone that can pilot a starship base, apparently. Well, I mean, you and um, Misto can both pilot it at level zero, which is like... Oh, we can? Yeah, like I said, you, you have pilot one, so you get the oh, other... Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah. Okay. So we have no one that's considered to be, like, really good, good, good at it, but, like, this is, like... Your ability to drive... Well, maybe not your ability. I played Project Zomboid with you. I was going to say your ability to drive a car is probably level zero, but you probably... Uh, you know, I've actually gotten a lot better. I don't believe you. But, like, the average person's ability to drive a car is probably level zero. They can do it. They can get to where they need to go. If a crash is happening, they have a decent chance of, like, oh, shit, and swerving to avoid it. But they haven't taken, like, defensive driving courses or shit like that, right? Yeah. So, like... Sorry. No, you're fine. So that, like, level um, zero is that fundamental um, baseline level of I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm going to do engineering. Okay. Uh, that's what I'm, that's le legitimately what I've been shooting for, and I already have three mechanics, so I'll shoot for engineering. Okay, so we have to try to get, a, uh, it will require a number of study periods equal to the, the goal skill plus one. Your goal skill is zero, so zero plus one. So let's see if the first study period uh, is successful. That is a education check. Difficulty so eight. D six plus or two D six plus one. Yep. Ten. Okay, so you successfully learn engineering. The baseline engineering for all skills. Okay, so that's all zero then. Yes. Now to realize that you have one more free study period to try but you couldn't then increase engineering to two, to one because that would require two study periods right mm -hmm. but here's the thing study periods are persistent so if your plan is this is the level up system traveler doesn't have experience or anything what it has is this is this study period system you have to pick a skill and start dedicating study periods to it to be able to increase it right so, what you could say is, is I'm going to put a study period towards an engineering specialty, and that would be fine, and if you look on character sheet number two, skill training, it marks what skill is currently being trained, and how many days are completed, and how many days are needed for it. So, you could be, like, halfway done with your advanced engineering if you succeed in this role. If that's what you want to do. Or, you could look at, um any of these other skills that you don't have at all and try to get them at level zero. Why are the science ones all blank? Because you would choose what science you want. Oh, okay. And the list is way too big for me to actually, like, uh, yeah, write all of them out. What's advocate do? Uh, lawyer. Okay. Which, the joke is, why would I ever want to be a lawyer? But think about how realism is such a huge part of this game. I even specifically pointed out about how, like, one of the limitations on weapons and stuff you can buy is the legal class for it. If you get caught on a... Like, if you get caught in a place where you aren't supposed to have a thing, regardless of what that thing is, you probably are going to end up needing to make an advocate check to not go to prison. Uh, and I'll point out, legal class is, is the category, but what legal class is allowed where is different. Think about it this way. You 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 know guns because I know you're military and I know you're interested in buying firearms etc cetera, etc cetera, right? Uh -huh. Semi-auto would be considered like a legal class. In some places, semi-auto is totally fine. 
In other places, semi-auto is completely and totally illegal. If you end up going through a state that doesn't allow semi-autos and you get stopped and someone finds out that you've got your AR in the back seats, that's a huge fucking problem. Mm -hmm. This like is where... If you're, like if you're driving through New York and you get stopped and, and they see that you have your AR there. And even, even going so far as to like, and this is the thing that happens in Traveler 2, this can even go so far as to having properly sized magazines. Mm -hmm. Right? And like, that would be the thing of like, you need to... The meme for us as gun owners is know your rights. That would be the thing of you being able to look at the cop and say, well, under this particular law, I am allowed transit through your system, oh, through your system for this amount of days because I'm just ferrying through. I'm not doing any, like, you know what I'm saying? And he'd, like, write you off with a citation instead of, like, holding your ship there for, like, the, the proper authorities to get there. So advocate is actually a very important skill to have. But does, uh, does gunner, what is gunner? Gunner is your ability to use turreted weapons. Um, is that I, like, would that be ship-based weapons? I love how you ask me a question and then you cut me off before I finish answering it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but like, yes, ship-based weapons, starship-based weapons would, would be using the tur gunner turret skill. Uh, defensive weapons would be using gunner point defense. That's stuff that like keeps boarding ship, uh, like boarding marines off of you or shoots down missiles on their way to you. And then, like, the really, really big, like, capital ship guns that are not really designed to, like, shoot at smaller craft. They're designed to, like, orbital bombardments or shoot at other capital ships. That would be artillery. Does, uh... Does Arena have studying in Starship Base yet? In, like, weapons? And No, in Pilot Starship Base. No. She did not uh, start as an independent. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. So she, she doesn't. Uh, the so hive she, or world, right? Yeah. So she's. Uh, she's kind of just, you know, doing her thing. She's got other benefits for being a hive worlder, but. What's broker? Is that like buying and selling? Yep. Negotiating better price for uh, cheaper for you to buy, better for you to sell. The haggle skill, which I will point out, Traveler is written to be like. Again, I, I keep making the reference to Firefly because Firefly was a Traveler campaign. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's the the roaming the stars, picking up odd jobs here and there. Ostensibly, the expectation, not the requirement, but the expectation, is that officially most travelers serve as like private couriers moving stuff from place to place and also like if you've got the money they might take mercenary gigs on the side and mercenary can be anything from like hey can you guard this vip to like hey we need you to be muscle for this criminal operation you know what i mean like officially they're usually considered to be like traders which is why broker is a really really important skill but like because because that's your passive money right is a lot of times you'll say something like, oh, hey, we got a transmission from, like, fucking Walmo, Walmo 7 or whatever the fuck. And, like, mm -hmm. someone specifically wants us to, like, come there and meet with them because they say they've got an interesting proposition regarding lost technology. Hey, do we want to, like, look around the system that we're currently in and see if anyone wants us to move, like, cargo out there? And, like, we'll also get some better, ca like, cash on the way? You know what I mean? It's your side quests. Okay. Um, what does leadership do game wise um, at the beginning of any combat you get the opportunity to make a leadership skill check to increase everyone's uh, initiative um, does Drail have leadership from his I'm reasonably tree? certain he does no he doesn't actually oh Zarina does yeah because she was a she was an able officer she was like very specifically like an officer yeah until she crashed <laughs> This is why I didn't want to be having people type those so swapping between seven different fucking windows. <laughs> I don't know. I <laughs> Let's see here. You could have just been talking at this point, Serena. Jesus. <laughs> Let's see. Should I do navigation? Navigation is, is just land nav. 
you've taken land nav courses, I've taken land nav courses, anyone yeah. that's in the military has taken land nav courses. And to be fair, again, not a bad skill to have. Because it is not unexpected or unreasonable that you might find yourself on a planet without a map. Or like a very basic topographical map that your ship scanned for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um... Also, Zarina, I'm I'm busting your lady balls. Don't don't take that to heart. I love you. You're beautiful. You're amazing. I'm gonna give you head scratchies. Appreciate it. <laughs> also, when uh, when this video was starting, uh, my girlfriend was playing with uh, her friend with the on voice, so I didn't want that uh, cross chat. Oh, that's fair. Ugh. But yes, more scratchies. Um, and then I'm guessing our resident diplomat has persuaded deception. He's He's got persuade at zero, actually, uh, and deception is at one. But again, I will stress, like I said a couple of times, there is nothing wrong with having a little bit of, like, overlap. Because there's nothing to say that he might not be, be preoccupied and you end up having to talk to someone, right? Over-specializing to the point where everyone has individual skills seems good because you go, oh, hey, between all four of us, we have every single skill covered. Until you realize that in the reality, most of these tabletop role-playing games, someone's going to be hurt or out of commission or not available at some point, and that's when you go, fuck, we don't have a pilot. Or that's when you go, oh, shit, the only person that had medical training is, like, the one that's unconscious. What or my... Small craft, does the gunner's skills apply to that? Yep. For the one that I got, like yep. the little shuttle that I got? Yep. I will take the... I'll go for gunner then. Okay. Uh, education check. Um, difficulty zero. And what you're... Yeah. Huh? No, go ahead. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> All right, uh, so if it fails, um, you lose D3 times five days. Uh, a full study period is 20 days. So uh, you had 20 days successful. You're losing D3 times five. So slash our D3. Yep. Can you... It, can you even do a multiply in this, or is it just... Just We'll just multiply in our heads. It's just So you lost 15, so you have five days completed. You need to do 15 more days uh, of studying for, okay. for your gunnery skill. Okie dokie. And now, we get the one last thing that I wanted to do here. Let me see if I can find... Uh... Is it the height, height weight stuff? Yep. Uh, pull this up. Uh, I'm so sorry for sniffling in your ears and also the recording's ears. Being sick sucks. You know, realist, like to be honest, I haven't really heard you sniffling that much, if at all. Oh, I've been, I've been snarfling. Or maybe I've just tuned it out. Or I've been sniffy snarfling. All right, so I know that you are bad with backgrounds. So, would you like to randomize what kind of independent colony you came from? Uh, sure. Roll me a d100. 85. <laughs> I mean, this makes sense because it was from the, uh, the Divine Imperium. Uh, you are from a shrine world. Your home world is controlled by the priests of your state of your local religion perhaps covered in gleaming spires and vast temples, and perhaps it welcomes countless pilgrims to its holy battle sites. Whatever the case, your people are likely to be devoted servants to whatever god you worship. So, your entire planet was a temple. This is like, and this is this is like, obviously we, we kind of describe the Divine Imperium as like, the Vatican. Right? Like the Vatican State. 
Um, this would be like actually you grew up in a church in the Vatican. See what okay. I'm saying? You know, that actually makes sense for the Divine Imperium. Like that whole planet was converted into one gigantic temple. It makes a lot of sense for where I started. I'm a fan. All right. Uh, roll me a D100 to determine what your uh, height and weight is. 44. Okay, you are svelte. Uh, which means that you are, as far as height goes, about six foot. I'll let you, you know, Jeez, give, her, tall. give or take an inch if you'd like, you know. Uh, and you're about 155 pounds. Again, give or take five pounds, however you'd like. Uh, I'm sorry, I was looking at the male one, because the male and female roles are different here. Oh, okay. Uh, it's fine. So, Not that big of a deal. It's probably not gonna be that big, that different. Let me. Um, you rolled. What was your roll? Forty four. Yeah. All right. So you're about five foot eight. That. Again, give or take an inch here or there. And wait. Uh, about a hundred and forty to a hundred and forty five pounds. Would you like to randomize your coloration, or are you happy picking your own hair like color, skin eye color? color? I, I did silver and green. Silver okay, hair, that's green fine. eyes. Between, between contacts and hair dye and everything, I have absolutely no problem with you choosing your own. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, um, I kind of remembered that, so I already filled that out. All right. Would you like to roll a uh, interesting character quirk? <laughs> you know what? Fuck it. Sure. Why not? Roll a d100. Also, for anyone wondering where these rolls are coming from, this is not Traveler, this is Dark Heresy. I'm using those uh, to determine these. Um, ooh! You have a devotional scarification tattoo. Well, is this just more and more fitting for being in That the really Ethereum? fits well. So, like, ritual scarification tattoos somewhere. You know what? If we want to base it off of my character, you know the uh, portrait. Uh, I mean, I guess so. Uh, let me let me pull like, up the no, portrait. but like the character portrait. You know how she's got that tattoo. On well, her that's arm? what I was saying. Let me take a look at your portrait. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can we say that. That's say like. That the... Sorry. No, please go ahead. I was gonna say that we could say that there was a scarification thing there. And then when she fled the Divine Imperium, she tattooed over it. I will also point out that that scarification carries up to your face. Look. I see that. Yeah. Or, or, better yet, no, that, that face stuff, that's from the decompression. Oh, that's good too, that's, yeah. that's That's burn markings. Yeah, we'll do that from the decompression, and then the shoulder thing was the scarification that she tried to tattoo over. But, I mean, scarification would still be visible. Yeah. Which is why they do it. Because they're branding yeah. you with their religion. Alright. So you can make those... You, you can make those as comments underneath uh, either your character or uh, your player there. Character. Just right-click it and oh. do uh, comments, and you can just go ahead and add those. And that's character creation. You are now done. Congratulations, you didn't die this time. You almost did. But you actually rolled reasonably well on that severe injury table. So. I rolled really well on that. Yeah. And then you got lucky that that severe injury happened when you were in a military service, so they covered most of the fees. I will point out, you, you're starting with 52,500 credits. You would have been starting with 60,000 credits. I have 15. Yeah, you po. Agent and uh, Agent and Drail are are feasting on fine wines and like imported goods. You and Lexi are eating Chef Boyardee's in the hold. <laughs> I'm surprised I actually got so much cash. I told you, scouts pay well. That was not. <laughs> I still, I still can't believe that I got that near death and none of my stats got lowered. And in fact, I ended with my one of my stats higher. 
<laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to end the recording here. Um, and we can keep talking in character creation uh, in the channel here if you want. But uh, yeah, so that's character creation. Uh, for anyone that ever wanted to see Traveler character creation, as I explained, it's literally, you don't get to choose what you're doing. You choose what your character's trying to do, and then roll skill checks to determine how it plays out. Um, this prevents people from doing proper min, uh, min maxing. It also means that, uh, you get a backstory written for you. Um, so I'll post this up on the YouTube, and, uh, Misto, you can also use this to show this off. So bye, everybody. Bye.